So one of the things that happens every time you create a report is you're always going to get questions about what certain sections of it mean. Like what is the logic behind sales? What is the logic behind margin? And because of that, it's best practice to actually add in a form of glossary or data dictionary at the end of each report to be able to explain this to the end user and also remind you if you haven't touched that report for quite a while. So you always got something to reference back to. But one of the things is, is maintaining it because there might be times when you actually create the report, give the definition, but it's not detailed enough. And you wanna be able to just update it so it just automatically updates the report so you don't have to keep going back in, editing the report, or adding a screenshot of your glossary again. So the best thing to do is to create a table, which I'm gonna be using in Google Sheets, to be able to just automatically update whenever you make any changes, make it so you can tailor it for each page so it's actually filterable, and then also use it to be able to show actually on the report page an information button that you can hover over and give you what the definition is so they don't have to keep just going to that one page to be able to see what that one singular definition is. So if you wanna find out how to do that, let's jump over to my Power BI desktop. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna start with a report that I've got here to be able to use as our base. And then all I've done is create a page that's just got a glossary in it. And then all the glossary is, is to use a Google Sheet. And what I've done to make this as user-friendly as possible is I've got five sections. So you've got one that's an index, which is basically the order that you can create it so it can be sorted in that order instead of just alphabetical by whatever the term is. And then I've got a page section. And what that is, is it allows you to be able to set, even if you've got the same metric or term that you want to reference to, you can just replicate it on an extra line just by showing a different formula to point to where you're just doing your main update. Hence why here I've got source, which says written and then cell linked. So everything that's written is the one which you update and anything that's cell linked will be updated by the one that's above it. And then that allows you to just completely give full control when someone goes into the glossary be able to pick what the definitions look like. So if I go back, this is currently showing all, but if I was just to select, say this one called sales overview, you can see it reduces. But if I did sales performance, which is currently this page over here, we can see that that is this page and all the definitions that are in there. And the great thing is once you update it on the Google sheet, you can just refresh. So here it says sales overview, but if you actually look back at the page here, you can see it says sale trends. And so all you have to do to be able to import what you've written in here is you just need to just click on the share take that link go back into your power bi do get data do more just start typing google and you'll see it here google sheets you just do connect and then you just paste in the url and then it will just ask you to log in with your google account you just do that and then you actually get a table which ends up looking like exactly like the table you got here and then whenever you do an update, all you have to do is just do refresh data. And there you go. You now have the new page, which says sales trend. And if we go up here, we now can see it's updated. And that's how easy it is just to literally create a glossary page. Because all you've done is just basically just take a table here and then you just dropped in index just for the sorting. But then you can sort by term if you wanted to. And then therefore it takes out the indexing. You can remove the indexing. If you wanted to, you could go actually to term and then sort by indexing. So then it actually sorts by the index. As you can see here, so you don't actually have to put the index in. It's up to you but I prefer to give people the option because sometimes people want to be able to see stuff alphabetically and then some people might want to be able to see it in the order that you've created it in. And yeah, you literally just drop in your term, which is basically what you're calling the actual metric. Do it exactly to the name you have in the report so you can refer to. And then you've got your definition, which is where you just put what everything means. And then the great thing is you can add in a few more slices for filtering here where you can just pick which one you want and then people can just search as well and then also definition if they needed to type in something so they wanted to see everything that said sales in it you can just do that and then therefore it will just pick up everything that has sales so now you know how to create a simple glossary page how do you create those little pop-up information icons to be able to show the information that you've got in here well there are three different ways you can do this there is one way you can just go up to insert and if we just went to buttons and then down here we got this nice little information button we can just click on that. We can just go into here, just make that a little bit smaller. And then if we go into our actions, we can see it opens up here. And then 
we got some text down here. So let's say this is sales and we wanted to add the text that's in sales. We can go back to our glossary. We can just nick the sales, which is down here. Let's just copy that value. And then if we just click back on our little icon again, and then if we go down to tooltip, type in the text, click out. And now if we hover over it, it gives us this little bit of information. But the issue with this one is every time you need to update the sales information, you would have to not only update your Google sheet, but you would have to come in here and manually change it. So now what would you do if you wanted to say, let's do profit. So let's just copy this profit is its own separate one. If we wanted to reference what is happening just in the table, what we can do, because you can see down here, we got this conditional formatting. And what that allows you to do is select something. So if we was to just create a measure that was basically going, just look for the line that has profit as the term and then give us the definition, we can then add that to it and it will give us the result. So if we do this as profit tool tip, and then if we just go uh, calculate, uh, to get rid of that, uh, calculate, and then max definition. And then we just want it to be filtered by profit, uh, which is the term. So we type in term and then we do equals profit. And if we just go down there and then do that, we can now come back to here, go there, type in profit, and then we can see profit tooltip, do okay. And now if we hover over, we can see profit amount of product sold. This is the amount of sales minus the cost of goods sold. So that means it's updated. And the good thing is this will now pick up any changes you do within the Google spreadsheet. But there is a slight problem because we're now using this little bit of information. When you have something that needs more than one of the definitions. So if you're talking about margin, margin is a mixture of profit and sales and it gives you margin. So actually you want to show all three because you want to be able to reference the margin percentage and then explain what profit and sales is because that is in the definition as well for margin. So you would need all three. Now, if you're trying to do it with the measure or do it in there, one, it would be, it wouldn't tell you which bit is the definition or the term, shall I say, it would give you the definition, but I'll give you the term. But even if you were to use this particular one, it will pick the max, which is going to be the first one, which is going to be sales. So it only show you the sales one, so it won't show you the rest. And this is where you can then use tool tips to be able to pull off the little maneuver here. So what you can do is if you take what you've already created here and let's just duplicate this page and then we call this glossary tool tip and then let's just leave it as it is for now. And the main thing you want to do is click on the canvas so it's on the outside of the actual report and then you come over to the format of the report page and then under that you've got report page information. So under here it's got the name and then you've got this little thing that says allow to use as a tool tip and you just click that as on then you can create a tooltip page so if you were to say once create one from scratch you can just do a new page and then instead of just going use as tooltip you can just come down to canvas settings do tooltip and it creates a little page ready for being a tooltip and then you can automatically see it's already picked it as tooltip where everything else but if you need to change the size of it, you can just go to custom and then here you can say 500. So you can keep changing the size if you want to do it separately outside of just doing a copy that I've just done now. But this will make life a lot easier. And also you can see how it moves when we change the size and how it looks when you actually use something that's a full page. So if we just hide this page because we don't want it to actually be visible to the end user, you want to be able to do it just when they hover over something. So if we come back to our sales performance, we now have our thing here. And if we then look around and we go to tooltip, we don't have an option to be able to select the page. What you need to be able to do is actually use a visual that does that. And luckily we've got a card here. So technically you didn't have to put that little thing in there. We can just go in the card. And if we go general, come down here, we've got tooltip, we turn it on. We now have a thing that says report page and page auto. If you click on the page auto, you get glossary tooltip. And if you click on that, you can now hover over and you'll see that whole page. Now it's a bit big, it's cutting off because it's so big. So really you just wanna play around to get it to the size you want. One of the things here is that's great because now if you hover over that, you don't get anything. Maybe you just hover over this, you don't. But if you were to do the same, say with this discount distribution down here, you go to general and then you've got your tooltip, and then you can do the same again. So if we even went to this one, so if we go here, here, and we can go there, and then if you hover over, it will give you the whole information as well. 
But if someone's just happily just moving along, they probably don't want to have that. They want to only see it when they hover over the actual icon that you've got there. Because we know we've got a card that can actually do this. What we can do, we can just add in a card to be able to just do that action for us. So if we just create a card here, make it slightly smaller, we want to be able to make a nice blank card. Now I've got in here a blank measure that I've been using for the sole purpose of doing these little splitters here. So this is basically a blank measure where it just says blank like that. So you can see it says blank. And then all we do is just drop that into our card and then we do that. And then it says blank across it, which is not very helpful. The way around this, because even if we was to get rid of that, so let's make this call out label white and then call out value white. It now looks like it's completely blank. But then if you put it over your little icon there, you can see it's cutting off because it's actually still saying blank underneath. So the way around that is to, instead of put blank, do two quotation marks with a space. And the reason to do a space is even if you do one without a space, you can still sometimes get these little dots that appear. And then also it won't work because you need to be able to have a value in there. Let's get rid of this tooltip on here just to show exactly what I mean. So if we go do 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 down here, remove the tooltip, we go back to this and we click on that, which is the card with the blank on. And then we go down to tooltip do on come down here glossary tooltip and then if we hover over it it doesn't work and the reason it's not working is because there's nothing there if we were to go back to our measure add in a space wait for it to refresh there we go and if we hover over it works now it's made it a bit smaller because you're obviously doing a bit more condensed still the report too big too big you don't you don't want someone to be hovering over that and seeing something so big like this and one of the other things you need to be wary of is microsoft like to do changes to reports and power bi all the time and this sometimes works sometimes doesn't you might find it doesn't work for you. Now, there are other ones around here. So if you do the new card visual, you actually get this little option down here. So we placed it, but it's made a background and some borders, but we can get rid of that. If you look down here, it's now got this little tooltips bit. So you can actually drag in what you want to be a tooltip and it actually shows you visually there. So if you ever have any problems with the normal card visual, just play around with maybe that or maybe the gauge. I think the gauge does it as well. But just have a little play around with some of the other visuals to be able to get to that. But just say if you're going to use the new card visual, because that one actually has that little tooltip section in. If you go down to fill and border, just get rid. And there you go. You now have your little tooltip there. So like I said, if we come back to this, we don't want it to be big like this. And we don't need it to say glossary. So if we get rid of this and we get rid of this and we get rid of this and we get rid of this, we can now go and make this a bit smaller and maybe we want it to be about that size. We won't need the index so we can get rid of that. And then we want to be able to make the text wrap. For some reason it's not working. <laughs> Ah, fun, fun, fun. I wonder if it'll work on, is it working here? Yes, yeah, so it's working there. Ah, I know why it's not working. It's because I need to bring it in here. There we go. That's better. And then if I bring this out, I can actually probably leave that in a bit actually. So let's do that, let's do that. And that's a fairly decent sized one. So if we click on the outside of the canvas and then we can go to canvas settings, go to custom and let's make this 600 by 600 maybe. Ah, oh, that's too much for height. Right, let's do 300 by 600 and let's do view it's a bit big let's do actual size there we go then we can see what it actually looks like and then we can just drop that in and then we can just change the size or have i made it actually perfect size almost so if we do that it's got long bring that in there we go and then we can come back and then if we hover over it now we now have this reduced one but it's not showing the ones we need so how do we get them well that's easy we just click on that and then if we come back to our page here and if we go into filters for this visual so you know it's the right one because it's got blank on it if we drop in our term we can now select which ones we want to see so we want margin and we know margin includes profit and sales so we just add in them and now if we hover over we now just see the ones we need to see and you can do the same with everything else but the first thing you want to do is if you go up to view you can go to sections and then under here you can see the different buttons so you see when i click on them they get highlighted over here we can see that's that one and that's the card new so if we click on both of those holding down shift we can then right click group and then we have our group so we can just call this one margin percent info 
button so we know what it means. And then the great thing is, now you've got that, you can just click off it and then click back on if you want. Copy, paste, drag over. And now we're gonna do number of orders. We just go down into here, unselect all, find number of orders. There it is, hover over, boom, number of orders. And you can keep doing that with all of them. So you can do that with the ATV. You can make a bigger one if you wanted to cover all the information that's in the table there. You can do a definitions that are actually showing up within a graph. If you were to create an extra page, like I say, if you created a page that had trends in it, then you can focus on what you would see in the glossary. So if we just reduced it down here, you can just filter and then you can see these, you could do those six in a page. And then that will give you a view to be able to just see that information when they filter there. But it doesn't matter because whatever you set actually on your icon here, it will always show what the definition is and it will change every time you edit that Google Doc. So you only have one source which you need to update and all it takes is a refresh and everything is up to date. So I hope you found this video useful and if you did please give a like and subscribe and if you'd like to find out how I actually made this dashboard in this video check out this video over here where I'll give you a walkthrough of how I made it step by step.